If you've been watching lately, you know that Boeing has problems that go beyond anything on this planet, quite literally. While its CEO was answering tough questions on Capitol Hill yesterday, its engineers were grappling with issues dealing with their Starliner spacecraft. Since they launched on June 5th in its first crewed test flight, astronauts have navigated several issues, including malfunctioning thrusters and helium leaks, and it's turned their week-long mission into a three-week stay on the International Space Station. Retired NASA astronaut Leroy Chow joins us now. Leroy, help us understand these problems and, and how much of a concern this is. Well, you're right. As you pointed out, Boeing has had a lot of problems, uh, not only on the commercial airplane side, but also on the space side. Uh, Starliner way behind the original schedule, a lot of development problems. Finally got off the ground, Butch and Sonny are aboard the station but not before encountering several minor difficulties, helium leaks, thruster failures. Uh, you know, these are kind of medium to light problems because it doesn't really threaten the mission at this point. It's just a little bit concerning that uh, we're having these, you know, numerous small glitches. But the bottom line is the helium leaks are about, you know, pretty small. Uh, NASA says, says they can tolerate about 100 times what's currently leaking had five thrusters fail on the way to the station. Four of them have been reactivated. One remains disabled. Uh, shouldn't keep them from coming home safely. Uh, NASA and Boeing just being extra conservative, don't want to be complacent, want to go through everything. And so just being a little bit extra cautious, that's why the mission is being extended. So as it is, the ISS is, is kind of uh, a crammed space, right? So I, I'm wondering what kind of contingencies are made for this kind of situation where you have astronauts essentially stuck for two more weeks than originally planned. Right, so NASA, of course, what we do at NASA is we make uh, contingency plans. We plan for redundancies, backups. And so you can bet that the folks at NASA have been looking at, well, in the very worst case that we decide that Starliner cannot come back with Butch and Sunny, what can we do? Well, of course, which and Sunny can save haven at the ISS for, you know, well, basically a number of months at least. And so uh, that would be time to get a replacement spacecraft up, probably a, a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. I think NASA would have to rejumble the uh, traffic model, but certainly a, a SpaceX uh, Dragon could be brought up to bring Butch and Sunny home. So in the very worst case, that would be what would happen. But uh, you know, as I said, the problems the Starliner is experiencing are relatively minor. So I fully expect that on the 26th, per the plan, current plan, uh, Butch and Sonny will make it back safely in the Starliner. Yeah, we're, we're hoping for that. Leroy, I want to turn to the Voyager 1 spacecraft because this is really impressive. It started sending back data from truly uncharted territory. It, it was sidelined by a glitch some seven months ago, but now through some creative programming, uh, NASA is able to gather data from it. What are scientists learning from the Voyager that's out there billions of miles away? Well, you're right. This is pretty uh, amazing. Voyager now around 15 billion miles away from the Earth. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, or 50 million. Sorry, but it's <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty incredible. This spacecraft was launched 47 million or I'm sorry, 47 years ago, and. Uh, <laughs> Here it's still sending back data, and it's made it to the heliopause, uh, which is, you know, the uh, extent of the uh, influence from our sun. And so it's sending back data from a place that no probe has ever been. And this is uh, basically beyond the reach of our solar system, you know, ventured outside, first uh, man-made object to do so. And so it's sending back data on its environment, on, you know, what's going on out there, pretty much in deep galactic space. Uh, really, really impressive. Yeah, whether billions or millions, it's still really impressive. I mean, five decades nearly that this thing has been out there. Leroy Chow, always great to chat. Uh, good, to, good to be with you always, Boris. Thanks. Thanks. When we come